Hey everyone, welcome back. In this video, I'll take a look at these RFM95 Maduino LoRa boards. These are development boards based around an Atmega328, so you can program them using the Arduino IDE, and for the most part, any of your code and libraries should just work on them like any other Arduino compatible board. But they also have an integrated RFM95 LoRa transceiver, and that means we'll be able to wirelessly send and receive data over some pretty impressive distances. You can also get these RFM95 LoRa chips as SPI breakout modules like this, or even as Arduino shields like this. That way you can use them with just about any development board you have. I'll put some links in the description so you can find them. The Arduino code will basically be the same for all of these, but I'll be using the Maduino LoRa boards because you get the Arduino, the LoRa module, and an integrated battery charging circuit all on one board. Supposedly, under ideal conditions, you can send data with these RFM95 modules over something like two kilometers, which is about one and a quarter miles. That's some really good range, especially for a small low power device like this. Granted, that is under ideal conditions. So in this video, I'll take these outside and give them a test under more realistic conditions. I live in the city, so there are lots of buildings and trees and interference that should reduce the effective range quite a bit. But before I head outside, I need to load some code onto these boards. Here I have the Arduino IDE open, and I'll be interfacing with these RF modules using the Radiohead library. Radiohead is an Arduino library that makes it really easy to interact with wireless modules like this. It'll save some time in not having to look up all of the SPI instructions for these boards. I'll put a link in the description for that as well. Next I'm setting some pin constants for these Maduino boards, and the frequency. In this case I'll be using 915 megahertz, and I'll talk about that more later. Then I'm creating an instance for the RHRF95 type and then allocating a buffer big enough to hold one message over LoRa, which is defined by that Radiohead library as this constant. In case you're curious, I looked into it and that's 251 bytes. If you're sending anything larger than that, you'll have to break it up into multiple messages. Here I'm just resetting the module using the reset pin. Next I'm initializing the module with the default settings, um, changing the frequency, and setting the transmission power to 23, which is the highest this device will go. If you don't need as much range, you can reduce this value to conserve power. The main loop is pretty simple. It checks to see if there's incoming data. If not, it just returns because there's nothing to do. Otherwise, it defines this len variable to be the length of that data buffer, and then calls this receive method, passing in the data buffer and a pointer to len. If this method fails, it also just returns right away. Otherwise, at this point, the data buffer contains the data we received, and the len variable contains the length of the data. Then down here, I'm just sending that data back over the LoRa module and waiting for it to complete. All this program does is wait for a message to come in over LoRa and then echo that message back out. The reason I'm doing this is that I want one of the boards to echo every message it receives and the other board to periodically send a message and wait for the echo. This way, as I move the boards further apart, I should be able to tell at what point the echo is no longer received. And that's exactly what this program does. All of the setup here is the same, except I'm using pin 4 as an LED so I can see what's going on. And then I'm also creating a new function called blink LED, which blinks the LED a few times. And here is the main loop. The message I'm sending is hello world, but first I'm turning the LED on so that I know it's in the sending phase. Then I'm sending hello world and waiting for that to complete. Next I'm waiting for a response, and I've set the maximum wait time to be five seconds. If there is no response within that time, I'll call blink LED and return to restart the loop, because that means this round trip failed. If there is a response, then I'll try to receive it, just like with the echo program. But in this case, if the receive fails, I'll call blink LED and return. Otherwise, if everything went correctly, so we sent the message, got the response, we'll just turn off the LED and wait a second before repeating the whole process. Here's what that program looks like when it's running. Every second the LED blinks once really quickly, 
And that's because we're turning it on before sending and turning it off after a response has been received. This shows that communication is working and the message completes a full round trip. This is also interesting because we can see how long it takes for a round trip to complete. It's sending hello world from here to here and then responding from here to here. And all of this happens in the short amount of time that the LED is lit. Now, if for some reason the round trip fails, like if I unplug the board running the echo program, then you see that the LED turns on for five seconds, which is that maximum wait time. But since it doesn't get a response, it blinks the LED to show that it failed and tries again. When I plug this board back in, you see that it returns to the normal short blink mode, meaning the message is now being received. This way, when I get out of range, I'll know exactly when the connection cuts out, and I should be able to tell how far these devices can reach with this configuration. Pretty cool, right? Anyway, let's take these boards outside and give them a spin. I've got the Echo board here powered by a LiPo battery and the Ping board in my hand powered by my phone over micro USB and I'll just start walking away. While I'm walking, let's talk about some of the ways you can configure these LoRa transceivers to optimize their performance and range. And just to illustrate this, I have this software-defined radio device that lets me pick up all kinds of different radio signals and monitor them from my laptop. This way, we can watch some of the transmissions in real time on a spectrogram to get an idea of what they look like in the actual radio spectrum. These devices are pretty cheap too, and they're really useful for testing and debugging wireless communication like this, so I definitely recommend picking one up. They're also just a lot of fun to play with too. The program I'm using to visualize this is called GQRX, which is open source and free and it works really well with USB software-defined radio devices like these. Anyway, I've got it tuned to 915 megahertz, just like I've programmed my LoRa devices. And right now there's no transmissions going on. This is just the normal background noise for this frequency. So there's not really any powerful signals here, just the occasional random interference. But if I start transmitting from one of the Maduino devices, you can see these little blips appear consistently every second. Each one of those is the message hello world being sent using the default configuration from the Radiohead library. It's the exact same setup being used in my walking test in the corner over there. And yes, I'm still walking. The transmissions happen pretty fast, less than a second for each one. That shouldn't be too surprising though, since it's sending such a short message. In fact, in the code being used for that walking test, every time you see the LED blink, it's doing two of these transmissions while the LED is lit. One from the ping board and one response from the echo board per round trip. Now, the default settings from the Radiohead library use a bandwidth of 125 kilohertz and a spreading factor of seven. If you check the specs for these modules, and I did, the allowable bandwidth range is from 7.8 kilohertz all the way up to 500 kilohertz. And the allowable spreading factor range is from 6 through 12. I won't go into the low level details about how LoRa works here, but you should just know that it's possible to increase the range and reliability by decreasing the bandwidth or by increasing the spreading factor. But that does come at the cost of transmission time, so each message will take longer to send. How much longer will it take? Well, let's decrease the bandwidth from the default 128 kilohertz down to a more modest 20.8 kilohertz. See how the transmission blip is a lot thicker now? It looks like it takes over a second to send the same message using this lower bandwidth. And if I reduce the bandwidth all the way down to the minimum value of 7.8 kilohertz, you can see that each transmission takes much longer to send now. It looks like about two or three seconds for each one. 
So that's the minimum bandwidth. But here's what it looks like when I increase the spreading factor from the default value of 7 all the way up to 10. Now it takes several seconds just to send that little hello world message. And if I increase the spreading factor all the way up to the maximum value of 12, hello world takes about 20 seconds to send. If we were to do a ping plus an echo response like I'm doing in the walking test, and yes, I'm still walking, this configuration would take about 40 seconds to complete one round trip. So that's how long the LED would be lit from the time of sending a ping all the way until the echo is received, compared to the maybe less than a second flash that it currently is. This will scale relative to your message length too, so this could add some pretty considerable delays for larger messages than Hello World. Something else to consider is that since the transmission time has increased, it also means that the power consumption has increased because the device spends more time transmitting, which is what takes up most of the power. But it's not all negative because it makes your transmissions more resilient to noise and helps to increase your overall range. These are some of the trade-offs you can make in your software when designing applications around LoRa devices like this. And it's not a one-size-fits-all kind of thing. Different applications will have different demands. If you have a sensor out somewhere that's infrequently sending small updates, like maybe a thermometer or water level sensor or something, then the increased transmission time doesn't really matter and you'd benefit more from the added reliability and range. But if you were, say, remotely controlling a drone or an RC car, then you probably want the updates to be as fast as possible. So it really just depends on your application and it's something you may need to experiment with to find the right settings for whatever you're trying to do. The default settings are a pretty good compromise, but they may not be the best for your use case. Another thing that impacts the range is your antenna. In fact, I'm almost certainly using the wrong antenna for this walking test, since these are the default ones that came with the Arduino board, and I believe they were made for dealing with 868 MHz instead of the 915 like I'm using. So if you really want to get the most out of your range, make sure you have a good antenna for the frequency you intend to use. Speaking of frequency, these boards come in two different flavors. One is the RFM95, which is what I have, and it's made to use the European ISM frequency of 868 MHz. But it can be programmed to transmit and receive from a pretty wide range, which is how I bumped that up to the 915 I'm using. In case you're curious about the actual frequency range, I ran some tests, and it looks like you can transmit anywhere from as low as 719 megahertz all the way up to 1024 megahertz. The other variation of this board is the RFM98, which allows for lower frequency transmission and reception, typically at 433 megahertz. And again, these can also be configured to use a range of frequencies, but I don't have one, so I haven't been able to test the actual range for these. In terms of which variation you should use, it really depends on the country you live in and the application you intend to use them for, because there can be regulations on the use of those frequencies for different applications depending on where you are. Here in the US, I know that 915 MHz has the fewest regulations, so that's what I've been using. But do some research and figure out what's best for your region in terms of regulations and stuff. And it was around this point in my walk where I finally hit the range limit for this combination of antenna, frequency, bandwidth, and spreading factor. I ended up making it about 724 meters away from the Echo device or about 0.45 miles. Quite a bit less than the 1.2 mile range under ideal conditions, but considering most of the walk was along a tree line and there were a handful of buildings in the way, in addition to the suboptimal antenna and higher than optimal bandwidth setting, 
I'd say that's actually a pretty good range, especially when compared to higher frequency radio technology like Wi-Fi or Bluetooth, which barely extends from one corner of my house to the other. Well, hopefully this video gives you an idea of how easy it is to write Arduino programs using LoRa devices like this, as well as the impact that some of the parameters have on their performance. If you have any questions or suggestions, let me know in the comments, especially if you have any additional information that might be useful to other viewers, go ahead and leave that in the comments so I can pin it to the top. And don't forget to check the description for the links to everything. And maybe go ahead and give this video a like while you're there, um, just so I have an idea of how many people are into this kind of stuff so I can upload it more often. But that's it for this video, and I will see you next time.